Welcome to our next lesson. In this particular lesson, we're going to be doing circles, sorry, continue with our circles and area unit. This is lesson 4.6, interpreting circle graphs. So we're going to get you to look at some circle graphs, and we're going to get you to calculate some information and to uh, tell me some information from these circle graphs. So I guess the objective state here, students will learn to read circle graphs and obtain information from the circle graph by estimation and by calculation. And you'll also solve problems involving circle graphs also. So procedure, what can we use? Uh, so we can use what we've learned about circles to interpret a graph, and this graph is called a circle graph. If you look at page 156 in the textbook, and I have copied this textbook and pasted it here for us to look at, okay? It says here 60 grade 7 students in La Cour Orient were surveyed to find out their favorite after-school activity, and the results are shown there. And you can see that I've got uh, sectors. That's what these little pieces are called. This here is referred to as a sector pi piece if you want to you know use a simplified but that each piece of pi is referred to as a sector now each sector is identified by a name and it also gives you a percentage now ordinarily if this was all that you were given you wouldn't be able to tell you any numbers about individual pieces but it does tell you that in this particular question there were 60 kids here now we're going to need that later so that you can understand inter you can understand it okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab this year and we'll put it on the next page to answer some questions okay well actually I guess we can start here first so it says which activity is most popular now because the graph is drawn to scale you can take a look at this and try to find the piece which is larger or you can read the percentage which is the biggest so you could see that the one which is most popular is right here it is the largest piece right there and we know it's the largest piece by the size of it, by looking at it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell maybe whether or not the, the video game one is larger or the hanging out with friends is larger. But because they give us the percentage, it's pretty obvious that it's hanging out with friends. So which one is most popular? Hanging with friends. Remember you fry your friends? So I becomes before E. Now which one is least popular? Well, you can take a look that reading is least popular. All right. So on our next que next pa page, I get a couple of more questions, but I'm going to grab uh, this here picture. Just give me a second to, to grab it, and we'll move it to the next page so that, that we can work with it, okay? So just give me grab it. Just give me a second. Okay, so I've got something for us to work with now. All right, I'll move this out of the way after. Okay, so it says here, how do you know which one is least um, or most from looking at the graph? Okay, and if you look at the graph, there's several ways, there's two ways of knowing it. Okay, one is the size of the sector right here or from the given percent. All right, so there's your answer for that one. So it's called the sector size. or in this case, the percent that's been given, okay? Now, how many students preferred each type of activity? How many students preferred each type of activity? So I'm just going to get rid of some stuff here, okay? And make sure I can sort of put this in so we can see it. So we're going to look at this, and we're going to get you to do... Um, just grab my stuff here. How much? I'm going to check my notes here. Just give me 30 seconds here. Okay. So what I'd like to do is uh, we're going to get you first off start off with by doing the, the percentages only. We'll talk about the actual numbers later. So looking at this, how many people preferred playing sports? So what I'd like you to do is to fill out your notes. How many of you preferred sports? And I'd like you to fill out TV, uh, read, and put the percentages beside each one. So I'll give you a second. I want you to pause the recording, and I want you to fill in this information. All right, so where do they get this information from? I'm getting all this information 
This is supposed to be a T, by the way. TV. Sports, 20%. Don't forget the unit. TV is 10%. Reading is 5%. Homework is 10%. Video games, 25%. And the last one, hanging with friends, 30%. All right. So that information, you read it directly off the graph. It's given to you as a percent. All you have to do is look at it and take a look at it and, sorry, and try to just read the information. If we didn't have the percentages, you'd have to do an estimation. And it would probably be a lot more difficult. All right. So let's go on to the next part of this. It says, what activity? I'll just make this a little bit larger so we can work with it here. What activity is the favorite for about one third of the students? What activity is the favorite for about one third of the students? Well, if you take a look here, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's which one's one third because this one here, the friends one, and this one here are very similar. But if you think back to what a third is, a third is 100 divided by 3, that's 33%. This here is actually 25%, that's equal to a quarter. So the one which is closest is this one, hanging with friends. I'm having a hard time with the spelling today. Okay, now the question goes on to say, why do you think so? Well, the reason it's so is it's about one third of the circle. Remember, area is related to the numbers. So if this is one third of the circle, that means it's one third of the students. Sometimes we need to find amounts of things rather than just the percents. For example, below is a circle graph of his favorite hobbies of 300 people. They were asked to rate three hobbies in order of their preference, and we had eating, biking, and video games. So you can see the three videos, uh, the three hobbies right there. Now it says here how many people are in each category. So to calculate this, we need to find the number of people in each sector. So I'm going to grab a picture of this just so we can have it done on the, on the, on the other page. Let's grab it quickly so we have it. Okay. I'll move it around as we as we need it, okay? I'll make it smaller for now. Okay. So there are sixteen people who liked eating most. To find the how many actual people there are, because it says how many people are in each category, I need to find 16% of 300. So we have to go back a unit and think of how do you find 16% of 300. Well, remember to do that, it's two steps. The first thing you need to do is to change 16 into a decimal. To do that, we divide by 100. And that is 0 0.16. Now that you have it as a decimal, to find the percentage of the 300, you take the 0 0.16 and you multiply it by 300. And you'll end up getting 48 people. So 48 people liked eating most out of the 300. So your job now is to want you to take and continue on to the next one. So use the, 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 the work that I just did to try to figure out how many people liked biking the most. Okay, so this is just becoming a pain, so I don't know if I can make it even smaller, but there we go. So calculate the biking. How many people like biking? Pause the recording and continue and finish it and then uh, start it up so we can see if you did it correctly. Okay, the stuff is actually the same. You have to take 26% and convert it into a decimal. So that's equal to 0 0.26. Remember, it's two lines. Do not string equal signs together. There's only one equal sign in an equation. So the next one is 0 0.26. Now the 300 people is the same. So you have to take 300 and multiply it by 0 0.26, and you will find that that is 78. So you should have had 78 people liked biking. Now there is a third way. To, sorry, to find the last one, video games, there is two ways of doing it. You can take the video game and take a look at the actual drawing here, and you find out that the, there is 58%. So you can go through the whole thing with 58%. Or what you can do is you can just take the 300 people that we had and take away the amounts of people that we already know. 
we know that there are 48 people who like to eat. We also know that there are 78 people who like to, to bike. So you can take your 300 and take away 48 and take away 78, and that gives you 174. So that's probably the easiest way of doing it. If you wanted to, you could take the 58% and you could convert 58% by dividing it by 100, convert it into a decimal, 0 0.58, then go 0 0.58 and multiply that by 300 and you will still get 174. Nothing will change, it's the same amount. Right. In this case, we did subtraction, what you did and what you got. So there's your two marks either way. Okay, let's take a look at our next question. All right. During a Walmart Christmas sale, the manager noted that they sold the following items from their clothing area of 871 items. Okay, so we sold 870 things in total. How many were purchased of each type? Now, you're going to get decimals here. Now, remember, you cannot have a decimal for an item. You can't go and buy 5.4 pairs of socks. Okay, so you're going to have to round that to the nearest whole number. So, let's have you try this. The process is the same. 20% of the purchases were socks. Oh, sorry, we're pants. I guess we're start with pants. So we need to find 20% of 871. So have at it, pause the recording, and we'll see what you do in a moment. Okay, so welcome back. First thing you need to do is find 20% of 871. So we're going to change 20 into a decimal. That's 0 0.2. Okay, and then 0 0.2 times 871. So when you take and do that, you're going to get 100, sorry, 174.2. Okay. Now, you can't have 0.2 pairs of pants, so we round this, it's going to be 174 of the purchases were pants. You will notice this is one of the key reasons that in word problems we always have statements. You have a mathematical answer, which is 174.2, that's the exact amount. But because common sense states that we cannot have 0.2 pairs of pants, we have to change this mathematical answer and interpret it for the people who are reading the question to be 174. Okay, let's have you do the socks. Pause the recording and do that. Okay, so 8% has to be changed into a decimal. Dividing by 100, you get 0 0.08. 0 0.08, multiply that by 871. And when you do that, you're going to get 69.68. And again, same problem. You cannot have 0.68 of a pair of socks, so this works out to be 70 pairs of socks, which were, sorry, 70 of the purchases were socks. Going to the next page, let's have you do the shirts. So pause the recording and do the shirts. Okay, so now 27% were purchases were shirts, so 27, turn this into a decimal, that becomes 0 0.27. Multiply that by the 871, and if you used your calculator, which you should have, you should get 235.17. Now you cannot have 0.17 pairs of shirts, or shirts I guess, so this becomes 235. Okay, let's do shoes next. Pause the recording. Okay, so now let's do shoes. We have 871 items, we're going to use subtraction. And we're going to take away the items that we know were purchased. Where was 174 and 70? And the last one was 235. So when you take and subtract 871 and subtract everything that we know, that is 392, which were shoes. So there were 392 pairs of shoes. Now, if you tried adding some of these things up, uh, you might have noticed, if you did all the percentages, that you might have been one item short. So, for example, if I calculated um, 174 shirts, and then 70, and then 235, and I also did 871, I did this one as a percentage of shoes, and the shoes, if you go back here, shoes were 45%, uh, okay? And I'll just quickly do the 45%. I don't know if this is going to work out to show my point, but I'm going to try it anyway. So we have 45 divided by 100, that's 0 0.45, and 0 0.45 multiplied that by um, 871. So grab my calculator. Okay, so here I have 
uh, 0.45 and multiply that by 871 and that gives I said 0.45 five times 871 and that gives me something's not right here 0.45 how come this isn't working 0 0.45 times 871 equals well there we go I guess I just wanted to be so that's 391.95. So that means I have 392. So when I add these to the total here, in this case, if you add up to 174, and you add that to 70, and you add that to 235, and you add that to 392, and you check to find out what you get, in this case, I did end up getting 871. Now, the reason I told you this is for this reason. If you noticed, every time we did this, we took and we had to round off some of these numbers. This 235 was rounded down. We cut off that. The one previous to that, this was rounded off by 0.2. This one was rounded off by 0.68. Sometimes what happens here, when you use just the calculation of the decimals, is that you may come up with a question where this might have been 391, which makes that a zero. And then when you compare 870 purchases with the total purchases of 871, the question is, well, where did the last purchase go? What was it? Well, the reason it's not there would be because all of our rounding eliminated it. Whenever you round an answer, you're actually introducing a little bit of an error. So sometimes those errors can show themselves in questions like this. All right, so be aware of that. That's why we normally use subtraction to solve the last question and try to stay away from using a calculation using percentages because this will just help this stuff from happening. Okay, page 158. Let's get started on your assignment. If you have any questions, rewind it, watch it again, or come and give me a chat. Talk to you later.